You won't remember this, but way back in 2007, when Collider was a nothing site on the internet, uh, I did an interview with you at Sundance for Last Mimsy. And, you know, I just wanted to say back then, getting people to talk with us was more of a challenge. And I just want to say a sincere thank you for talking to us back then when the site was not much. And I, I will always appreciate that. All right. All right. Um, Great. Uh, I want to start with a sincere congratulations on this. Um, Weird is fantastic. I um, honestly it was so much better than I expected. Um, what was it like for you reading the script and seeing the way it was going to satire like the biopic genre? Well, it's funny that you say it's better than you expected because I felt the same way. Like when they said, oh, they're doing a Weird Al biopic, they're interested in you for Dr. Demento. I read the script and I was like, it's like, this is like a comedy sketch, like a Saturday Night Live sketch. And it started as a funny or die sketch, which I heard like, how is this going to sustain for 90 minutes? But the script was so tight and they had worked on it so carefully. The tone was just right. It takes itself very very seriously and that's the kind of comedy i like where it's the most absurd circumstances possible but it's taken deathly seriously and there's not any commenting on it. it's not like hey we're doing a goofy movie you know so um as soon as i read it i wanted in i thought it was just brilliant how it kind of in an airplane like fashion uh satirizes the musical biopic without getting silly and goofball and broad. So was really excited to be a part of it. Plus Weird Al is a hero of mine. So one of the things that I couldn't believe is how short of a time frame you had to actually make the movie. Um, I mean, it was done, I believe in like 18 days or something crazy. Um, crazy, yeah, for a very low budget too. Yeah, can you sort of talk about that? Because when you watch the movie, it, it looks so much better and bigger than just this small little film. Well, that's all in Eric Appel. So the director has done a ton of sketches and the stuff for Funny or Die. When you do, I've done a bunch of sketches for Funny or Die and College Humor and those kind of places. And you're given like, you know, a very small budget. Here's $50,000 and you've got two days or a day and a half or one day and you've got to try and make it look incredible, you know, it's kind of a boot camp for filmmakers, you know, in the same way that Ron Howard started out in the Roger Corman world. A lot of, you know, the great comedy directors start out in those in doing those sketches and then moving to TV. And then when they get 18 whole days, you know, and a couple million dollars, they're like, OK, let me at it. We can do this. And he knew how to move the camera in ways and and cut and just a lot of movement and life and music. And um, they really made it feel like a a big, big movie. I really enjoyed the pool scene at Demento's house uh, with all the cameos and guest stars. Can you talk, talk a little bit about filming that sequence? Because you have so many moving parts and uh, it's just very funny. Yeah, I mean, first of all, we shot that and it was really cold. It was like 50 degrees and we were supposed to be pretending like it was 80. Um, and for LA, 50 is cold. And yeah. Uh, and then I had no idea who was showing up that day. And then all of a sudden, all this, like this cavalcade of stars was showing up at this house in the San Fernando Valley. And it was it was interesting because they had told me originally that they, they modeled Dr. Demento's character after Burt Reynolds' character in Boogie Nights. Kind of this impresario behind the scenes, you know, puppet master bringing people together. So that was like a Boogie Nights See, I mean, it was like a scene from Boogie Nights, only it just happened to have Pee Wee Herman sure. and uh, Tiny Tim and Divine and Gallagher and uh, Salvador Dali in it. Um, just so much fun, such great imagination and humor. Um, it was uh, it was a hysterical uh, part of the movie. One of the things that people might not realize is the film won the Midnight Madness Award at the Toronto Film Festival. Did you have any idea? like making this because you never know when you make a movie how it's really going to turn out did you have any idea like how good it was going to be you know um because winning the award at toronto is like a, it's a really big deal listen i knew it was a small budget i knew it was a short shoot but i also knew there was a lot of great talent involved daniel radcliffe gave it his all i mean blood sweat and tears 
shooting 14, 15 hours a day, learning accordion. Um, and, uh, and by the way, he was grossly overweight before we started shooting. And he did, he worked out with some of those Marvel trainers to get ripped to play Weird Al. You saw how ripped he was. It was like, you could grate cheese off those abs. I actually heard he trained with Chris Hemsworth for the role. He did. Yes, he yeah. did. Chris would, would bench Daniel. Right. <laughs> um, but then in exchange, he would give him some pointers. So um, super fun. Uh, I ask this of a lot of people. Um, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Me? Yeah, you. Um, listen, obviously most people know me from the office and they always will. And that'll be on my tombstone. You know, my epitaph will be the guy who played Dwight. But, sure. you know, I did dozens and dozens of roles before I played Dwight. I've played dozens of roles after Dwight. I would say like my favorite role or one I would love to be remembered for is the movie Super by James Gunn. Um, yes. I thought it was hit. It was, again, super low budget. We shot that super quick um, in Shreveport, scenic Shreveport, Louisiana. But I think the combination of humor, darkness, tragedy, insane imagination, my brain gets touched by the finger of God. Um, uh, I think it's an extraordinary work, and I'm really proud to have been a part of it. Yeah, that's a very cool movie. And well before James was in playing in the Marvel Universe. Uh, my my last thing for you, uh, you've gotten to voice a little bit on Solar Opposites, which is a show I love. Um, can you sort of talk about uh, getting to be a part of that? Yeah, um, Mike, the showrunner of Solar Opposites, he wrote a Star Trek short that I starred in and directed over in the Star Trek universe, over at Paramount Plus, and um, uh, where I got to play Harry Mudd. So we got to meet each other, and um, he's he's incredible. He's a comic genius and has an unlimited imagination. So loved being a part of that universe as well. Yeah, Solar Opposites is great for people that haven't seen it. Um, on that note, I'm out of time. I'm just going to say, man, I really appreciate uh, your work. I really thank you for your work, and I really yeah. will always uh, thank you for Sundance all those years ago. You got it, man. My pleasure. Pleasure talking to you, Stephen Weintraub of Collider. <laughs> Thank you. Have a fantastic day. You too. Later.